What's up, ATLians? Welcome to another Five Stripe Friday. I'm Blake, the Marshman, joined by my co-host. ATL, ho! This is our 16th episode. Thanks for joining us, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching. We appreciate you guys. Hey, we're uh, we're really excited this week. We got New York Red Bulls at home in the bin Sunday night. We're going to give you the preview for that game. We're going to get you caught up on our uh, adventure down to Disney World and Trash Lando. And uh, get you caught up on all the news all over Atlanta and all over the world. Like Laurel and Yanni. Did you just say the same word twice? Like I said, we're ATL and United Podcast. Hey, if you guys like us, please rate us five stars on this Five Stripe Friday. Hey, ATLians. ATL Joe here. Give you a quick rundown of the news. News. We beat Trash Lando 2-1. to one. Now we're back in Atlanta. Woo! They're still cleaning up the trash. It's all over the field. If you guys are looking for something to do this week, Kirkwood Spring Fling is going on. Hey, that's my neighborhood. So, will you be there? I will be there. There's a barbecue competition. It's awesome. Are you in the barbecue competition? No, I'm not cooking this year, but my neighbors are. I forget what they'll be called, but if you guys are out in Kirkwood at the Spring Fling... Come find me. I'll probably be eating barbecue. That's good. That's a great idea. Another cool thing, if you're still looking to go get some music, like we've been mentioning a lot, leading up to Jazz Fest, like I mentioned last week, at Atlantic Station, they're doing a Friday night jazz, and they have some sort of jazz band playing outside. So go by, go see the team store, get some ATL United swag, and listen to some sweet jazz. Some jazz, baby. Yeah, but uh, U.S. Open Cup update. Tormento played Charleston Battery. Oh, our official uh, fourth division side of the podcast? Yeah. What happened? Tormento lost one to nothing. <sighs> but Atlanta United news in that, Patrick Okunkwau, a guy we loaned to Charleston, That's scored right. the game winner okay. in the 21st minute. Charleston wins one nothing. but sad to see my Statesboro boys go home. That would have been fun to see them come to Atlanta. I know you wanted to come see them here. It was a good run, Tormento. If there's any silver lining, at least uh, – how do you say that guy's name? Okunquo? Okunquow. Okunquow scored the goal. Yeah, so we loaned two players to Charleston this year. He was one of them. Char- uh, then Wild was the other guy we picked up in the draft. Anyways, maybe we'll see Charleston come to Atlanta. We don't know. We're still waiting on who our victim is going to be. That's true. Uh, Sunday night in the bins, get ready for the New York Red Bulls coming to town. We got a good preview coming up for this. Huge match. It's going to be big. Uh, we just took back first place in the standings. Woo! Number one in the Supporters' Shield. Number one in the MLS. Number one in everything. That's great. Back on top, and it feels good. Uh, and you know I'm really excited. World Cup is right around the corner. I've been mentioning it. We are less than a month away from the World Cup. That is crazy. All week this week, they've been announcing World Cup call-ups, their preliminary squad. they got to cut down to 23-man. Some countries are going to go out and say already, here's my 23 men. Some are saying 30 to 35, and yeah. then they're going to cut it from there. Already about 20 MLS players have been called up. It's it's kind of cool. I want to see how many get called up, and Atlanta United sitting right there without having anybody to worry about getting called up. Yeah, we got players all over the league. I know Orlando had someone called up, right? They had, uh, yeah, they had Yoshi. Yoshi, Yoshi Uh and, and Carlos Vela. From LAFC. Both. LAFC got hit hard. Yeah. You got Vela, Omar Gaber, you got uh, Urania, yeah. and Beta Shore. They got four starters taken off their roster for at least a month. Yeah. And I guess to our listeners who aren't familiar with, you know, why MLS is different from the rest of the world, this is a good time to remind you guys, you know, MLS keeps going while the World Cup is going. So, unfortunately for teams that have players good enough to make the World Cup, they're kind of just out of luck in the MLS schedule. Uh, LAFC is going to be severely weakened. For instance, we've got six games during the month stretch of the World Cup. And out of those teams, I know we play Portland, who had two players get called up. Um, 
and then Seattle we play at the very end, so maybe they'll have their players back. They had three guys, including Nicholas Ladero for Uruguay, made the call up, and they had a couple of other guys, uh, one from Sweden, one from Panama, Roman Torres, mm-hmm. which those two teams may not make it as far, but Uruguay has a solid chance of making it to the Final Four if they can put together some good games. Always so we might team. face them on the day of the – we might face Seattle – which we're playing the day of the World Cup championship, a World Cup watch party in the bins. That's right. And then they won't have their star player. And already struggling Seattle now has to go through the stretch without their star players. Yeah, unless they get knocked out before the final. you know, Then he could probably catch the red eye back from Russia and get in that game. But that that's big news in world football, if you will, that we're taking the World Cup final on Fox is literally going to go from the conclusion of the trophy ceremony, and it's going to pan straight over to a packed-out Mercedes-Benz Stadium. It's going to be a beautiful sight. It's going to be a lot of time for people to pregame in the bins. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be cool. And more world soccer in the news. we got Champions League final coming up on Saturday. I'm going to try to get up to Brewhouse to watch it. I know they already ha- always have a great crowd there. Uh, it all depends on what my girlfriend is going to tell me what she wants to do. Let's go Liverpool. <laughs> and then we got to go watch Liverpool at the Champions League final. To be number six European Cups for the, for the pool. Yeah. Playing Real Madrid, who's going for three in a row and four out of the last five, which would be incredible. Great showdown. Yeah, so that's this another is a thing. Super Bowl. And if you guys are all into soccer and you're soccer geeks like me and like Blake, come meet us at SoccerCon. We are going to go and have a tent set up. We're going to be watch a World Cup watch party, get to watch soccer, get to talk soccer. We'll have some games set up where you can go play soccer at our tent. Go Egypt. What's the date on that? Uh, that's going to be on June the 23rd. At Rira. Come out, Midtown. See Joe and I. What else do we got on the calendar, Joe? Well, we just have some big things in the books. We just went to Red Hair Brewery. <laughs> Drum roll. And we are announcing that we're going to do a live podcast at Red Hair Brewery the day before the Orlando City game at home at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Come out and see us, hang out, get some beers, get plenty of beers, and we'll be there doing a live show and getting you hyped for Orlando City. Give us the date on that, Blake. We're doing it live, and it's going to be June the 29th, but we're going to do it live. I just figured I'd you know reiterate that. Live show. We're doing it live. June 29th. So we can't, we can't like offend anyone or say anything that we would want to, you know, cut out of the episode, Joe, just to remind you about that. And yeah. So to our listeners, come see us, come meet us. It's going to be a blast. So it's been a great week. Get out, get some music, go see some of the spring fling and we're topping the standings, MLS standings. We're back at the top. I can't wait until we finish the season back on top, let's, always on top. Let's stay on top. Now we got to stay healthy, Blake. Tell me who's hurting. Injury report. Injury. Injury. Injury report. Wah, 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 wah. The injury report is not as ominous as our intro music to the injury report. Everyone that matters is once again healthy. But I'm going to hit on a few things. Escobar, you know he had that thorax injury. He's back out with the team in training today. Did they release him from the Pokeball? I guess he got out of that Pokeball. And then we or got maybe Mc- they would catch the thorax from with the Pokeball. Possibly. I'm I'm really you will have to be our resident Pokemon expert and our Spanish expert, of course. I guess I'm just an expert at a lot of things. <laughs> at a lot but of a things. master of none. Anyways, McCann. McCann is still That's training to the side. So I don't know if that means we'll see McCann this weekend. I'd say it's pretty doubtful. I'd say Escobar is more likely than McCann. Uh, ATL UTD 2 news. Mitch Hildebrandt and Jose Hernandez both started for ATL UTD 2 on Wednesday night. So that means they're back. We got three That's keepers again because Brad's coming back into the frame. We got three keepers. We got no one really hurt. We got a weird thorax. McCann, come back. That's it for injuries. Let's talk about Trash Lando. That's, Recap. that's great news on the injury report. Everyone's clean and healthy. People are getting back and playing ATL UT2 or on the starting lineup. We got three keepers. I'm excited. And to recap, let's give them both a round, little round of applause to ATL UTD2 getting back on their winning ways. Golf clap. They got their 5-4 to four victory over Toronto 2. That was pretty impressive. We got a lot of Atlanta United young stars playing on this one. Romario Williams. You had uh, Mikey Ambrose, Brandon Vasquez on the field. Gallagher. Yeah, and five goals 
where Mario Williams got a sweet cross from Gallagher and he put it in the goal. Then he returned the favor later in the game, crossed it to Gallagher, who put it in the goal. You had Brandon Vasquez get on the score sheet. You know he's itching to play. He hasn't seen much of the first team, and so he's got to earn his time, and he put a goal in, so maybe he's trying to say, Tata, take a look at me. And then the star of the match, Mikey Ambrose, putting two. in two free kicks. Two goals. Giving his best Kevin Kratz impression. But this time he said, Kratz, I know you're a righty. I'm going to show you a left foot. Hey, you got to use both feet. And maybe if Mikey ever makes it back onto the first team with Kratz in the game, free kick late in the game, kind of in the middle of the field, you can have them both standing over the ball. You got a lefty option and a righty option. Both can do a sweet curler. I love it. That's that's just plethora of talent that we have on Atlanta United. And you never know when Ambrose is going to get back in there with with you know Garza's shoulder how it is. You know, I I, de- I don't mention it in the injury report, but it is ongoing. And he's just kind of living with that torn labrum right now. So you know, he went down in the Orlando game a little yeah. bit, looked hurt, and he he fought through the game. He's playing through a lot of pain. He is just a warrior. I love Garza. Let's talk about Trash Lando. Let's Trash Lando two to one got the victory. Ugly game, feisty game. We had times where we controlled it. We finally took over, got our goals, and went up. So we had to defend for our life. And Orlando, we made them play how they did not want to play. They wanted. They did not want to be full on possession, trying to create their ability the entire game. That's true, and it showed. They may have out stat every stat on the scoreboard showed Orlando winning possession, winning passes, uh, winning shots and shots on goal, but none of them were. N- well, there's meaningful. only uh, not to interject, but there's only one scoreboard score that matters, Joe, and that's that we won two to one. And for our, our listeners that, that didn't catch the game, which I would question, you know, your Atlanta United fanhood, if is fanhood a word? Fanship? Fandom. Fandom. I would question your Fan-hood's fandom or fanhood uh, if you didn't watch the game. But if you missed it, we won 2-1. to one. We got another goal from the young boat, Ezekiel Barco. And we got a, uh, a PK, which I thought Miggy was our PK taker now. We got a PK from Joseph Martinez after – you know, our uh, before-mentioned Greg Garza went down in the box. I don't know if he really was fouled, but he did grab him on the shoulder. He's got a hurt shoulder. I would have fallen down, too. So uh, we Did got- you see how surprised Greg Garza looked when he got the ball in the box wide open? Yeah. Everyone's like, turn and shoot! And he kind of turned the other way and looking to pass. Yeah. But someone hit him in the throat, and he went down. Yeah. It might have been his bum shoulder. I don't know. But, um, you know, we won the game, like you said, despite losing – stats but who cares we won two to one and then it came back after the game orlando multiple players got fined you we all love the memes that were blowing up over the internet with will johnson taking a dive and the gifts there are so many gifts so So many many and when he took (laughs) ran down the field and got up and screamed at the ref i don't know what his voice sounds like but all i could picture when he was screaming was like a mickey mouse voice he was in disney world (laughs) are you kidding me are you kidding me? That was a foul! That was a foul! Oh my god! Oh boy! How are you gonna find me? Yellow card. Five thousand dollars? Five thousand? How many ships do I have to pick up at Disney World to cover that? Joe. Joe. You're hurting my ears, man. Too much Mickey Mouse? I mean, if you keep it up, you know what's coming. Willie you? Johnson! You know Mickey what he, you know what he got for diving, right? Not only did you get a fine, but he got a straight yellow, yellow card. I couldn't pass up the opportunity to give you a yellow card. Yeah, that's okay. That noise that you were making was also pretty bad. <laughs> that's all I could hear when I saw him yelling at the ref at the top of his lungs. And other fines. Uh, Sané got fined when he and a couple of other groupings around the field were shoving Tito, and Tito wasn't doing anything, pushed on Parkhurst. They were just starting more fights than necessary, and everybody got fined on Orlando. Yeah, I think it's an awesome rule that the MLS is implementing this year to our listeners is, is, you know, this mass confrontation rule. You see this in a lot of leagues around world soccer where the players will surround the ref and try to get them to influence decisions. You know, it's like threatening the ref almost. Like, hey, we're going to surround you until you make calls our way. Well, the MLS has, you know, instituted a rule that, hey, you can't do that. Um, And so – Saw some players get fined for for getting in the ref's face this week. And Orlando was just a bad week. They threw trash on their field. They dove. They got fined. They got they got yellow cards. They got beat at home. It's just a bad week as a Trash Lando fan. Let's let's go to a little quote 
um, from their coach, actually. Uh, I think Atlanta right now has shown through the way that they finished last year and the way they've started off this year that they're the, they're the top. Um, that's the apex. Uh, and so they give us a measuring stick to, to, uh, to see what we're striving for. And I think Atlanta the apex, Joe, <laughs> he is just bowing down. Atlanta, you are God. We want to be like Atlanta. I don't know if, if you ever sell Tata there. Martino. My resume is right here. Yeah. Please sign me up. I want to be in Atlanta. Uh, coming from a fr- coming from the opposition's coach, I think what else can you ask for? I mean, this isn't the only coach that's praised us this year. You know, Patrick Vieira complimented us as well. He's an excellent coach at NYCFC, but Vieira's compliments are cool because he complimented the crowd and the fan base. That's true. And how rowdy we get there, and how much of a fan of a stadium we have. That was that was great. Yeah. So, you know, I think a uh, successful trip to Disney World, came back with a lot of trash, came back with a 2-1 victory, three points. We're back in first place. Saw Mickey Mouse take a dive. Mickey Mouse took a dive. It was pretty It was pretty swampy down there, too, like you'd expect Orlando to be. You know, as much as uh, Mickey Mouse was diving, even though Orlando's in the middle of Florida, he might have landed in the ocean. Or SeaWorld. Yeah, but not SeaWorld because of the whole blackfish thing. You know, did you ever see that documentary? No, that just went right over my head. Okay, don't worry about it then. <laughs> you know what? There's too much to worry about. I think I need a beer. Beer of the week! Every week. This week, we got Digits, the Burnt Hickory Brewery. Brewery out of Kennesaw, and they made a delicious blood orange IPA. I'm going to grab my golden spike and hammer one in like I do every week. Let me get my poncho out. Yeah, this one's been a little feisty today, hasn't it? I'm ready. A-T-L. Ooh. Yeah. Joe, uh, a little foamy. to our listeners, he, he really hammered that one home. Looks like he's got a little beer. Yeah, we're good. We're good. The uh, The producers will clean it up after the show. Yeah, but we're IPA lovers on this show. At least I am. And Digits has been a very good Georgia IPA. Uh, Beer Advocate ranks them in the top 10 of IPAs in the city, in the state. And a little magazine a couple years ago when they released this did a blind taste test called The Paste Magazine. And Digits made it into the top 10 of The Paste Magazine. And that was a nationwide IPA test. Wow. And so I think one thing that stands out about this beer is it's not your traditional IPA taste, and it's got that blood orange in it, so it kind of throws off the bitterness and a mix of bitterness and the sweetness of a fruity IPA, and it's just kind of a perfect blend. It is a perfect blend. So founded in uh, 2011, you guys be sure to get up to Kennesaw. Check out Burn Hickory, really cool brewery. Uh, you know They opened, I think, up their, their new tasting room in 2017. Kennesaw is blowing up. Got some great beer coming out of Kennesaw. So you guys uh, you guys get up there and check it out. Yeah, and this is a great beer to drink. Be careful, 7%. Yeah, But dangerous. that's that perfect level of – that's the max level you can get right before you hit to that double IPA filter. So it's a great beer. Get out there and drink them. It's got a cool logo. This is a great beer. I think uh, what our fans are waiting for, Joe, it's that Red Bulls preview. Preview time. Red Bulls, New York. It's our chance. We have not beat this team yet. We played them twice last year. Ugh. Opening game, 2-1. to one. They took our glory. Heartbreak. Yamil Assad scores the opener. And then we had the lead, holding on to it all game. The final 15-minute meltdown. Mm. They put in two goals to make it 2-1. to one, And we lo- walked out of the stadium with a win in hands, only to be crushed. It's like that was right after the Super Bowl loss to New England was still fresh for the Falcons fans. And everyone was just like, oh, no, Atlanta sports. Here we go again. That's so Atlanta. That's so Atlanta. Like that That's was the, so Atlanta. Like that was the one game we're going to play all year. <laughs> That's know? what everyone was saying after that one game. But then we go on a tear and we make the playoffs. So. Yeah, and later on in the season, we went to New York and played them at their stadium last year. And it was right after an international break. Miguel Amarone had just played multiple minutes from Paraguay. He didn't start. Joseph Martinez did not start. Both of them made an appearance at the end of the game trying to get a last-digit goal. Brad got save of the week. That was the first game 
Uh, know, that got, was save of the year, that game. That was save of the year. That was incredible. Uh, and that was one of the – was that the game that was on Facebook Live? Or am I thinking – that was Chicago, sorry. Possibly. Scratch that. That was Chicago. Screw but Facebook Live. I don't like was, Facebook Live. It was right down the stretch. We were trying to make the playoffs, and a loss would have really hurt us. It may have even put us down into fifth place. That's right. So – now it's a time coming in this year. We're facing Red Bulls. We're first. They're sitting, what are they, fifth right now? I believe but so. Well, the last standings I checked. So they may they may very well be the hottest team now that we knocked Orlando off of their hot streak. Yeah. They've won their last three, four out of their last five. Yeah. And they are coming in with making a statement. Yeah, I think they're five in the East and they're seven in the Sporter Shield. So they're five in the East. They're right there on that playoff line that 5-6 playoff line in the East, but they're a great team. Well, let's talk a little bit about their players. Uh, you know, best player, who you got, Joe? Well, we got to go Brad, Bradley Wright Phillips. Yeah. He is what they rely on. BWP. He is their boy. He is their man, and it kind of all revolves around him, and they built a team around him going forward, and they're kind of they've, – they've mixed a team up. We're going to talk about their players to watch. They've kind of got an old guard and a new guard. You know, they got rid of a couple of guys the past couple of years. La- Sasha Kleschen yeah, just got traded to Orlando, the- and he was captain last year. Mm-hmm. Year before that, Dax McCarty was their captain, and they traded him to Chicago. Yeah, both players we've highlighted in, in you know previous episodes. Those are both quality MLS stars. Yeah. And they just keep – they've they've realized that, sh- that they have been a team – over the past five years, they've been a perennial number one contender in the MLS East. But they're getting older, and they've they've shifted their focus from their older players and trying to focus more on a youth system, bringing up kids through their club and bringing on younger players, maybe even modeling a little bit after what Atlanta was designed to do as well. Very true. So they're, you know, this year Luis Robles is their captain. Is he going to be gone next year? We don't know. I mean, you know, Robles is getting up there. He's 34 years old. Uh, l- let's hit on a few more things, Joe. We, you know, they also made it to the semifinal of the CONCACAF Champions League. I don't think we can discredit how tough that competition is. You know, that was a great run by them as well. So I think the part of the reason that they have this old guard and this new guard is a lot to do with the fact that they were competing on a lot of competitions because, you know, they got the U.S. Open Cup, CONCACAF Champions League hits. You got to have all sorts of different style players. You bring up a great point there. CONCACAF Champions League, they got knocked out by Guadalajara, Shivas. The eventual champions. The eventual champions who went on and beat Toronto. Right. And so during the whole time, Toronto, we've seen at the bottom of the standing struggling, resting their players. Well, you had New York Red Bulls over here doing the same thing, but they kept winning. They lost a game to Orlando the day before they played Shivas, mm-hmm. so they rested a bunch of stars. That's a knock on the record. They lost a game early in the year, their opening game, when they were in the heat of the CONCACAF Champions League. They beat a club, Tijuana, yeah. who was one of the favorites to go on and win the whole thing, and New York Red Bulls knocked them out. Yeah, so Red Bulls are very dangerous. Their, their new you know, designated player is this 23-year-old Argentinian winger Alejandro El Cacu Romero. Did I say that right? Yeah, Alejandro Romero, but everyone calls him Cacu or El Cacu. Cacu. He got that nickname. He's from. He's an Argentinian star. He uh, he's made it a couple th- couple different youth clubs through Argentina before he found his fit, and his coach gave him the nickname Cacu uh, after the Brazilian star Kaká. But I guess his accent got shifted to Kaku, Kaku instead of Kaka because that's the kind of star he is. He He's a midfielder, attacking midfielder that is very quick, shifty, and he's really good at dribbling and passing. Like he, he's one big star to watch out for. He brings up – there's two different gears of players to highlight. Right. We've got the old guard. We've got the new guard. Yeah, old guard, you know, we've already kind of talked about these guys. Robles, the goalkeeper, 34 years old, USA International, arguably the best keeper in the league. I know we say that a lot. Brad has been uh, a little bit off form recently, as we all know. Uh, this guy's great. Um, and then we talked about him already, Bradley Wright Phillips. You know, he's looking for his, what, like 100th MLS regular season goal coming up. And he's 33 years old. I mean, 33, 34 in soccer years, that's up there. This is an England guy. He never quite cracked the English national team, never quite cracked the Premier League. 
but this guy has excelled at the MLS for a lot of years now, coming up on a hundred regular season goals. It's an, it's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. He's so, got 92 right now. Yeah. Bradley Wright Phillips got to watch out for him up front. They got solid at front and they got solid at the back with their keeper and their striker. Uh, you and mentioned, then you said that we, they got some, they got some younger guys. Yeah. But first I want to say Luis Robles, you mentioned him. We've brought up goalkeepers a lot in this episode, in this podcast, and a lot of people don't think MLS has good goalkeepers, but I think there's a couple tiers of goalkeepers, and Robles is easily in that top tier. Tier one. Tier one with Brad Guzan, with Stefan, and with Malia, the guy we played at Sporting Kansas City. Those Very are kind true. of the top tier goalkeepers in the league, and Robles beat out Malia constantly for that third or fourth keeper for the U.S. national team. Mm -hmm. He wasn't able to beat out, ever beat out Brad Guzan, but he was always right there in the mix, and he has been a star and a big part of New York Red Bull's success over the past five years. Yeah, and of course, we say he's getting up there, but 34 years old for a keeper is really, you know, keepers kind of come into their prime when they hit 30. You know, you look at like Buffon for Juventus. Uh, didn't he turn 40 this year, and he's still playing in the Champions League? And for the Italian national team, so yeah, you know, at 34, you got a lot of years left as a keeper. Not quite as uh, much running. You're not quite as reliant on speed. Uh, but Bradley Wright Phillips, I think he is kind of getting to the, kind of you know, close to the end of his career. But he's had a fantastic one for the Red Bulls. Yeah, and so that was that's kind of the older players, but they're shifting more towards a younger look. Right. And they went in after getting rid of Sasha Kleschen this past off season. They wanted to replace him with a young DP, and they signed their youngest designated player of their history, the 23-year-old Argentine, Kaku. Right. He is a guy that reminds me a lot of what Atlanta United did with Miguel Amaron last year. Very similar style of player. He's very good on the ball. His, one of his best attributes is, is having the ball at his feet and the dribbling, and he's very quick and shifty. And then another great attribute that Miguel Alvaron also does, and it might be a trait of the Argentinian league, is as that center attacking midfield, he will bust his butt to get back and defend the ball and go steal a ball. Love how many that. how many goals this year have we seen Miguel Amaron create just by stealing the ball and creating a quick counterattack? But I love that. I love that. As a midfielder, no matter if you're playing, you know, in that 10 spot, if you're playing center attacking, or if you're playing, you know, the six and you're playing defensive mid, you gotta go win the ball. You gotta get in, get stuck in, make some tackles. Miggy's probably set up what three or four goals this year just from winning balls back. So, so yeah. You gotta watch out for Kaku. He is definitely a guy that's gonna be making waves around this league. Uh, he is another kick guy that might be going from MLS to Europe eventually. So he is part of that South American bringing the South Americans to MLS and then pushing them on to Europe trait that MLS has been shifting to. Love it. MLS, what do they call it? 3.0? Yes. And then another young kid to add, to star from New York Red Bulls is one of USA's own, Tyler Adams. 19-year-old kid. Brought up through their youth system, and he is making waves on the U.S. men's national team. He is going to be sitting up right next to Christian Pulisic, and it's a kid I'm excited to watch for U.S. men's national team going forward. And it's a fun Atlanta United battle to watch Chris Goslin and Tyler Adams go at it, who's going to be eventually be the starter for that six or eight spot on the national team. I think they could even play together in the future. You know, I think Adams is more of a defensive midfielder right now. But how exciting is it? I'm just excited to watch this kid on Sunday night in the bins. He's he's fantastic. He's got that high work ethic. Like, he's always going in for tackles, always winning the ball back. I mean, I love watching him. Yeah, it's, it's great. This is another player to watch. I might watch him the most because I'm a USA fan. And, you know, you got him. You mentioned, and I mentioned Goslin. And they might be playing side by side, but you got that guy oh, across the sea in Germany playing Weston McKinney with Schalke. Mm -hmm. You got three young kids that can play that center defensive midfield and kind of shifting. And may, they're going to be playing alongside Darlington Nagby on our team. Yeah. And New York Red Bulls decided to feature this 19 year old kid, and he has been incredible for them. He's not a goal scorer, so don't watch him score. He may score a goal now that I said that against us. I hope not, but <laughs> hey, hey, will you go ahead and, and knock on that wooden <laughs> yeah, hammer? Yeah, let's for do me? that. <laughs> Give the wooden hammer a knock. But he is not a goal scorer. He is a true box to box midfielder. He is looking to win the ball back. He is looking to defend. He is looking for that first pass to create a chance. 
So it, it's a fun young kid, and they brought up a bunch of youth system players. And so those are kind of the four players to highlight. And, and I'm really excited to watch this game, but one of the most th- things I'm ex- most excited about is they're a high-pressing team. Yeah, they come at you. They are, they're not going to sit back and defend. And so Atlanta is a team that's a high-pressing They're a high-pressing team. It's going to be a super exciting game to watch. It's going to be back and forth. Who is going to create the most mistakes to counterattack and capitalize on that mistakes? I think think we have to break this down further, Joe. I think we got to go into it. It's time for Tata's Tactics. Tata's Tactics. Tata. El Tata. The tactical genius. What do you think he's thinking, man? Like, what do you think is going on in his brain when he sits in that, like, luxurious automobile chair, you know, in Mercedes-Benz? In his tracksuit. And he kind of, he like, leans back and folds his arms. I would love to just get inside the brain of Tata. I imagine it's all just, like, X's and O's and formations. I imagine him. Like, no words, no thoughts. It's just formations. When he leans forward and crosses his arms, I think he's thinking, what type of cigar should I have after the game today? Ah, uh, yes. Because I think he's a cigar smoker. I feel like he knows. I've never seen him smoke a cigar. I just picture him having a big, fat stogie in his mouth after a win and just celebrating with a cigar. Yeah. Maybe after we win the cup on the beach, a glass of rum, big cigar, and he just puts his arm around Miggy. Wait, I just woke up from the dream. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the listeners. I, I was going off there. Uh, so Tata's tactics. Um, three five two is back. What What's going on with that, Joe? I thought you said we switched back to the four, three, one, two. Yeah. And then you you called it a four three three kind of. And we had switched back to it for Sporting Kansas City, and then going to Orlando, it's kind of a interchangeable that we've talked about. We have an interchangeable lineup. And maybe Tata saw something in Orlando that they're not going to be a team that's going to be going back and forth that we need to dominate possession with. And he saw that he maybe want to put Gressel back into the, the play and how well Gressel exceeded that right wing back and how well we have played in that 3-5-2. But Gressel played a great game. Let's talk about Gressel. You know, I mean, I, I like Gressel in the team. I just don't know if he works in the 4-3-3, and I think that's part of the reason we keep switching back to the 3-5-2 is that, you know, Tito is obviously better playing right wing when he's got a right back behind him, right? Yes. But Gressel can almost play right back and right wing. He's so versatile. His work rate has been so high this year. I think I think right now Gressel's got Tito beat, and I think that's a talking point that we have to hit on, Joe, because Tito Villalba is one of the highest paid players on the team. He, he is an Argentinian national. He is he is one of those players. He's kind of in the top three or four that was rumored, hey, this guy might future you know move on to Europe. Yeah, and, especially with his speed alone. He's top two fastest guys in the MLS. And he's kind of on the bench now. You know, he got the start against KC. Gressel went to the bench. We lost the game. Gressel comes back in against our rivals. And, and in my opinion, stakes his claim for, for staying there. What I don't, do you think? I wouldn't say Tito is on the bench necessarily. Uh, he is coming back from injury. Hamstring injuries can be tricky. That's true. You see him all around the league, people going down with the hamstring. That's what got Chris McCann knocked out. And it's one of those injuries you are struggling to recover with, and you got to be very careful, and it's early on in the season. Right. And Gressel has been in this great run of form, so it's kind of we've got players to rotate, and Tata is using that tactic to rotate his star players, and he's got Tito that maybe he can use as a super sub. Or is because, that second striker? I think we got to hit on that too, because you know he, that's where he was playing when Barco was still hurt. Yeah, and you got you got Tito as a guy that can replace if you want if you start Gressel, he can replace Gressel like for like, mm-hmm. uh, or he could replace Barco later in the game when Barco gets tired, who doesn't seem to be at full fitness yet, still this late in the season. Well, yeah, it's still early. But he can also go and play replace Joseph Martinez if we need someone to replace him at the top. Or even, he hasn't done this yet, but I could even see Tito going in to be a replacement for Miggy or 
sub him for Miggy, move Barco to the center, and put Tito on one of the wings. Yeah, Tito's a very versatile player. Very versatile. I think that's what we, we should hit on. And we talk a lot about positions on the show, and we talk a lot about positions all the time, uh, just amongst the Land United fans, whether you're at a tailgate, whether you're at the bar, whether you're just you know chatting with people at work. We have such a versatile team. I almost feel like we need to stop classifying players in specific positions and say, okay, we can at least go broad. Okay, we know who our defenders are, right? We know who our midfielders are, and we know who our attackers are. <laughs> and to me, that's the categories right now. Because you can you can slot players in all over the place. Like I said, before this year, we didn't really know McCann was a center back. You know, we hadn't seen a lot of Miles Robinson. And they, they, and they come in in Orlando. Miles Robinson plays fantastic. McCann obviously was out, but he's played great at center back all year. What a story Miles Robinson is this year. He comes in as a guy we drafted last year, second overall in the entire draft. Later, we got Gressel, and Gressel surpasses him, yeah. wins rookie of the year. Miles Robinson spent his time in the youth system, played at Charleston, and has developed. In the past two games that he's started, he has shown that he is a player that is ready to take that next step. Just the height advantage that he adds to our team, he's 6'1", 6'2", and he can jump. I Did you see the aerial duels when they crossed the ball in Orlando? He went up and got the ball, Dude's was got the first to, it, to, first to win the ball. And kind of a question was how he plays at his feet. And he was playing with the ball really well at the feet. Yeah. He was making good passes. That's a great story. And we got another competition with Escobar and oh, Miles Robinson. Yeah. And we got Chris McCann. Uh, three guys that can really play. Are we playing the three in the back or the four in the back? And and then Sal Zizzo comes into the con- – it's almost like a no – not even in the contest yeah i mean what i'm saying is like we gotta we gotta bracket our players a little bit differently than i think we have in the past you know we have such versatile midfielders you know miggy miggy can play behind the striker he can play on the wing you know tito can play striker or he can play wing the only player that's really the two players in my opinion that are stagnant is joseph is probably not going to start anywhere but striker true and brad's not going to start anywhere but goal other yes. than that, you know, LGP and Parky, they got that center back spot nailed down if they're healthy. Everything else is kind of a wild card at this point. I think Larry's not nailed down that that center defensive midfield role, and I think obviously Barco's going to hit the field. So, and now you talk about Parky, well, who's one of my favorite players. I've mentioned several times he is my MVP of the team right now. Uh, one thing I think he highlights very well is when he, we play that three five two. Michael Parker sitting as that center of the center backs with two other center backs behind him kind of really opens him up to make him kind of the general around the field. And with two other center backs, he can be a little more risky and moving the ball at the field. I've seen him take a couple players on one on one and just so smart with the ball that two, three in the back accentuates Parkhurst in the center and accentuates Gressel down the right side. Yeah. I mean, he's a captain. He's a captain when he's out on the field, and he's a guy that he, he really reads the game well, like you said, and that at the same time, he's just he's such a solidifying force right there in the center of the defense, playing the balls through, reading their passes. I just feel so much more solid defensively when Parky's right there in the middle. It's, it's encouraging to see. Let's talk about game predictions, Joe. Uh, you, you talked about their high press. You talked about – how this game's going to go back and forth. I'm guessing you're thinking a lot of goals. What What's your scoreline for the, the Red Bulls oh, match? This is tough. Um, I did talk about the high press. Both teams like to press the ball. It's going to be back and forth and exciting. And I do think we're going to see some goals. Can Atlanta United's defense hold up? And I think they can. Uh, you got to make sure you know, Bradley Wright Phillips is very like for like for Joseph Martinez. Bunch of poachers kind of hold that high offside line. Yeah. And they got another like for like player with Miguel Amaron and Kaku. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've got the X factor when we've got Barco and we've got Tito and we got WrestleMania. And we got Martinez the Matador. El Matador Martinez is going to get a hat trick this game. Wow. I'm calling it right now. Wow. Hat trick for Martinez. We're going to get our first win against New York Red Bull. And I'm going to throw in one extra goal. We're going to get four. They're going to score two. It's going to be back and forth. It's going to be an exciting game on Sunday. Four to four two. Four to two. Hat trick to Martinez. He wants to get that golden boot. He wants to say, hey, Gaiasi Zardes, I'm better than you. 
He's going to like let the Red Bulls run at him with the whole matador. What do they call that? Is it just a red red blanket? And then you pull it back, you know, and they get the matador. They get Joseph. It'll be Joseph's hair coming out of the red red blanket. Just like, hey, I'm here, and here's my hair. And we just we just got a hat trick past you He's going to um, change his hairstyle into two bullhorns <laughs> coming out of his fa- head. <laughs> that would be awesome. That'd be a, that would be an A-plus level troll job if Joseph came out with the bullhorn hairstyle. What is uh, your score prediction, Blake? I'm going with three nothing Atlanta United. I think our defense is solid, but I uh, I think that we come out in the three five two again. I think we shut them down, and uh, I don't know I don't know who's going to get the goals, but I think we get three at home. We always score like two or three goals at home. It seems like so. I love three nothing. Uh, I'm excited about this game. Atlanta United faithful, Atlanta United fandom, fanhoods, fans of all kinds. Please come out Sunday night. I know, I know our attendance has been awesome. I know the Benz has been packed this year. We can't let up. I think you'd agree, Joe. We can't let up. And it, it's it's great. I will be there. I'll be traveling home from Tybee Island and going on a bachelor party. That sounds fun. Be loud. Be proud. Everyone, get into the game. Get behind the team. Get behind the chance. Whatever you're doing, just support this team. Yeah, and, and guys, this is a great episode. Go check out our website for all the love and all of our uh, everything we've been doing around town. What's going on around town? Our sponsors. You can check out our sponsors, Fan and Maniacs, who make some great swag. You can check out the dates of Soccer Con. You can and when we're going to go to Brew House and when we're going to go to Red Hair for the podcast. June twenty third, June 29th. We'll be at Brew House May the thirtieth. Um, we're doing a little flag hanging party there for the uh the, the new england revolution away games we'll be watching the game at brew house if you guys see us there say what up thank you atlians for tuning in i am atl joe joined by blake the marsh man the marsh man this has been, been our 16th, 16th episode, episode. I, I can't, can't wait, wait to go, go get, get another, another win in the a t l see you guys, guys next week, week. Hopefully, hopefully victorious, victorious. We, we will, will be, be victorious, victorious. And, and we'll be, be drinking, drinking digits, digits. Scoring, scoring digits, digits too. too.